All right, guys. So our next topic here, I said off the top, we have some some new news, if you will, about so the Scarlett Johansson predicament. Some interesting things have come out. There was a, a Disney shareholder meeting where Bob Chapek said some things that weren't taken so well by a lot of people. And then it, it, continuing to kind of just spread the fire of a Scarlett Johansson situation. But aside from that, I found something else to be kind of interesting that ties into this Scarlett Johansson issue. Obviously, if you're not familiar, the whole issue is Scarlett Johansson and her team, or her legal team, are suing Disney as of, uh, what was it, July 29th, I believe, for the the day and date release, essentially, of the Black Widow movie, because it was in their contract that she would receive some sort of payment based on how this, you know, successful it was in the movie. Details haven't been fully released, but that's pretty much what it is. She would get back in points, you know. You would get a certain percentage of the box office gross paid to her. And then some other comments have come out where, like, from people who are working at Disney that shouldn't be in their job, in all honesty, who have just come out and, like, released her salary information to the public, just kind of shitting on her, like, oh, she made this much money already. What's her problem? That kind of thing. Like, very unprofessional, in all honesty. But that aside, there was something that came out here that I thought was actually really interesting that um, involves Dwayne The Rock Johnson and the Jungle Cruise movie. So there was an article that came out stating that, you know, you know, Dwayne, it was obviously brought up at some point, you know, well, is Dwayne Johnson going to sue Disney over the Jungle Cruise thing? Because they ended up doing a day-and-date release of his Jungle Cruise movie. And the interesting thing is here is that he's not going to be suing them because they actually worked out a new deal and appended the previous contract and made a a new one to where he would receive compensation differently because it's going on a day and date release, which is interesting because that's exactly what Scarlett Johansson and her team have stated. That's what they tried to do with Disney for they like, do a, it. For like a couple. It was like a couple months leading up to the release of Black Widow. Her legal team has stated that they have reached out to Disney to try to negotiate new terms because that's what they wanted to do with the movie. And they essentially were just ignoring her. Just open, she go away, and they they never did anything to come back to the table and renegotiate. They just went along and did what they did, put it on movie or put it on Disney Plus, and then just went on, just whatever. And my theory with that, though, just quickly, and I'd like to get uh, your guys' thoughts on this. But what this tells me, in all honesty, obviously, I don't have any insider information on this. This is just putting two and two together in my head. The only thing I can really think of that actually makes sense is to why would they you know, come to the table and renegotiate with Dwayne, but then not do the same for Scarlett. And the only thing I can come up with is they have, they plan to do more work with Dwayne in the future. So they want to keep him happy. They want to do whatever, you know, they don't want to have bad blood with him. They don't want to screw him over or anything because they intend to do more work with him in the future. Whereas I think short term wise, Disney was looking at, you know, Scarlett Johansson, the Black Widow character as, in the mindset of we're done working with her why do, why would why should we care you know she was her black widow character was killed off in endgame spoiler alert the black widow movie was a prequel so they never really had any real plans at least public plans to do anything else furthering the black widow character for all intents and purposes she was done working with them right and i really don't think there was any other i don't think I might be wrong about this, but off the top of my head, I can't remember any other time that Scarlet has actually worked with Disney outside of these Marvel films. So that's the only that's the only thing that came to my mind is like, well, why would they do this with Scarlet? Because like she's worked with them for so long. They've had a really good relationship up to this point. Keep in mind, this has nothing to do with Kevin Feige and Marvel. Kevin Feige and Marvel wanted this to get worked out. Like, like he 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 kind of implored Disney to just come to the table and get something sorted, sorted out with Scarlett and her team prior to this whole thing happening, which again Disney refused. So, to me, it seems like that's what the the option was for them. I don't know. I could be wrong. Could be, but it just what makes sense to me. Like, why should we? You know, we don't have to do it. You know, we don't have to honor our contract. It doesn't matter if, you know, Scarlet won't want to work with us in, in the future because we don't need to work with her. We have no need for her. Black Widow's done is what it is. That's what I think about it. 
I don't know. Is that crazy? What do you guys think about that? Rick, what do you think? Do you think that's a, a viable solution? Do you think that's feasible? I think it is. What yeah. led into it? Yeah, and uh, it's good that they were able to work it out. It's kind of unfortunate that Scarlett Johansson didn't really get a piece of that pie. But like you said, I mean, when has she really worked with them outside of Marvel or anything like that? And until you said that, I, I didn't really realize it. And I was like, huh, I don't think she really has. So it's a shame she wasn't able to get on that same train uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson did. But I, why is it that like he did, but she didn't? Could it be like the way they approached it or... No, honestly, I think the only reason it is, like I said, is just because they plan on working with Dwayne in the future. They I think that Disney knew probably they were done with. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think yeah. logically that would be the, if if I was in a position like I would never put myself in a position like this. I would I would do everything I could to not be in a position like this, obviously. Right. But from the outside looking in, the only thing I can think of is this: if I was Disney, the only re the only way I can justify them doing one thing for one person and then the complete opposite for another person. Because this is a, you know, essentially a, it's burning bridges, you know, one way or the other. It's it's going to make some, one party not want to work with the other party to some capacity. Now, granted, this could always get resolved. Like, I'm, it, will, it will get resolved one way or another here in the future. Like, I can almost guarantee you that Six months from now, three months from now, who knows when, but Disney and their team is going to meet with Scarlett and her team, and they're going to come up with a number, this is going to go away, and this is never going to see the inside of a courtroom. It's just not. Like, Disney's just playing Big Bird right now and making a bunch of public comments that are, again, really shitty and unprofessional in a lot of ways. Because even Bob Chapek and his little... Like uh, during the uh, shareholder meeting, he, he he had more comments that were just it's kind of like threw the Scarlett Johansson thing under the bus. He he reiterated the comments of whatever the PR person said about like her not caring about the pandemic, and you know this is really like you know bad timing for her to come out and like not take into consideration the position that they're in. Like he he pretty much reiterated those comments, which are absurd because it, in the grand scheme of things. I'm just just to be clear, I'm not saying this is a good excuse and I condone this excuse that Disney is doing it this way. I think they they're 100 percent in the wrong. Like and it doesn't matter if you're in the camp that like s somehow is not in support of Scarlett Johansson, because I know there's been which is kind of shocking to me. There's been a lot of people who kind of agree with the mindset of that PR person who is like, well, what's her problem? She made 20 million dollars. Like, that's not the point. No. If you had a contract with somebody, you would want that contract to be fulfilled. Especially if if it's not being fulfilled in some way affects your income. You bet your ass you'd go out there and you'd fucking raise some hell. Like you'd be pretty upset. You know, if, if you get hired to do a deal and you have a contract that says X, Y, and Z, but then all of a sudden the company you're working with is no longer going to give you Z. And they don't do anything to renegotiate the terms of Z. You're just going to accept that? Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure nobody, nobody here would accept that. They would, they would want that to be sorted out. They would want fair compensation, especially if it's something that was agreed upon between both parties. That's how legal contracts work. This is what it is. So I definitely don't condone what Disney's doing. I'm just this again. I, it's just the only real justifiable thing that I could see, like where they could be coming from is that like they just don't see that they're going to be you know they don't have a need for scarlet anymore so it doesn't matter if we you know we don't need to you know re-up her contract renegotiate it like we did for the rock because you know we're we're not going to work there anymore what's the matter like right. we can draw it out who cares it doesn't matter what do you think about that john you think that theory is crazy because i know you've been following the bob chapik stuff and all the stupid things that him and the disney pr team has been saying so yeah. Where are you at? Uh, with this no, whole I, deal? I mean that that makes perfect sense to me. I, I, I it's odd to me that Disney would just arbitrarily decide that okay, Scarlet like it's like they have a list of actors and actresses and they looked at it and they went, Scarlett Johansson, we're done with her. Okay, yeah, okay, just cross her name off. Like I would think that they'd want to have the option in the future to use her for other things. I mean, they've got an entire Star Wars universe that I would think that, you know, at some point they made, you know, she's she's a a bankable movie actress. I Mara mean, she's, Jane. she's a, a, Oscar a movie nominated. star. 
multiple Oscar, Oscar nominations, movie score. if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, you you have you have people cross over between universes all the time and and work in different areas. So I, I just I don't know. It's odd to me. You know, you've got, well, you've got what um, Oscar Isaac. You know, he played Poe in the Star Wars movies, and now he's going to be Moon Knight in the Disney you know, universe. So why in the world they would like just cut off that uh, entire person is just weird. But it appears to be that's what they're doing. Um, I, I just don't, don't see I, any I, other I, reason that they, you could be in a position to justify their action. Right. Like, unless the, the they only... just had no plans to ever work with her again. Like, that's the only thing that could make sense to me. Or or it's just, I, I don't know. I mean, I get the sense just from my very, very, very distant, no insider knowledge, but just what you read and see and hear in, in trades and other things that, you know, the industry, the entertainment industry is full of is full of just, I don't even know what the right word, jerks, douchebags, scummy people that just don't mm -hmm. have, they, they have a serious disconnect from reality. The Kevin Feige's of the world are few and far between when you get into the world of, of, of the entertainment industry and, 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 and the egos, like you have to have a massive ego in order to be in that industry. And the egos lend these people to think that they are, more i don't know what the right word more important or or that they that that the people like like you know i'm I, you know maybe it was a simple matter of whoever scarlett johansson's people reached out to at disney to say hey look you know we heard you guys are doing this we'd like to kind of talk about how this is going to impact scarlett's you know payday because you know she was banking on this being you know and maybe maybe the person whoever it got to at first was just like screw her like I, you know she, she, she'll she'll take what she'll take what we give her like you know maybe they were just that arrogant that they felt like you know you know she's just an actress and she doesn't you know she doesn't get a say in this you know this is this is what we're doing and this instead of actually look at it and going oh, okay yeah you're right we probably should try and work something out and maybe maybe whoever the rocks agent called got a different person that day maybe there was just a different you know person that was assigned to that per account or whatever right. and that that particular person was a little bit smart it was like hey you know we may want to work with them further down the line i i don't know i don't I, I don't know if it was just dumb luck of the draws to who handled each instance or if it truly was some edict in in, in the disney offices where they were like we're not using scarlet anymore right yeah okay good screw her see ya right which the sad thing is because of what you were uh saying is like there are people like that that's why in my head I can actually think of it being like a, the justification. Like that's why it's happening. Because otherwise yeah. they're just shitheads. Like, because it's like, well, you have to have a reason to be, because people are literally making public statements about, the, like they're not denying that they didn't pay her. Like they're, yeah. they're, they're owning up to it and saying that like, yeah, we didn't do it, but look how much money she already made. Like, yeah. It's, like it's kind you, of a shitty way to do it. It's a very shitty way to do it. You're outing someone's salary that's completely personal. Yeah, just like, look like, how much money they made. They yeah, shouldn't be upset. Trying to, it's, it's a smear campaign, and they're not defending themselves in any way. They're just trying to make her look bad. And it's like, yeah. you, you're the ones who are in the wrong. Like, you know, it's like, we didn't ask well, you how much they, she made. Like, Especially when they tied it to COVID, as if yeah. somehow her salary and COVID had any kind of connection or rationale. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that's honestly too. I, I actually because uh, when the, when this news first broke, we did a video on it, and uh, I responded to somebody in the comments because I think the the clip for it was just like uh, something about like ScarJo and Disney or like end of I forget what it was. Like it was some thing, but uh, someone said in the comments like like I, I find it highly unlikely that this would be like the like you know, have any consequences on, you know, Marvel or something in the future. And I was just like, I don't know, because this isn't the first time Disney has fucked over a creative that they had exclu like an exclusive contract with, because if you are familiar with Shonda Rhimes, she was behind like Grey's Anatomy and yeah, all that, that whole universe there. She had an exclusive deal with Disney because they own ABC. And 
part of like Shonda Rhimes' you know contract allowed her to have uh, like Disney season passes for like her and her family, and they go to like go to Disneyland one day, and the pass isn't working. So she calls someone at Disney and says, hey, can you fix this? Because the pass isn't working for like so and so. And then like someone on the phone literally said, like, don't you have enough? Like, literally, that was their that was the forget the contract. Yeah. Like, she's like, don't you have enough? Like, like, boo hoo, your season pass isn't working. Like, don't you have enough? Shonda Ryan. Like, that's literally the way one of your vacation. Yeah. Like, and it's like. That's not the point. Like, like you guys said, I have a pass to get in here. Now you're you're changing the terms of the deal like, because you're saying I have too much. Well, or, yeah, and like, the okay. the other the other point of that, and I think we talked. I brought this up, and we talked about this before, and we're we're going to talk about this later on too with another uh, another segment that I think we might get into. But um, Scarlett Johansson was part of Iron Man 2. And Iron Man 1 made a lot of money, but Scarlett Johansson was part of Iron Man 2. And then, you know, part of Avengers. And both of those movies, you know, it, you have to remember back, but both those movies did well beyond what people thought they would do. They, the, Iron Man did better than anybody thought Iron Man would do. And then each successive Marvel movie after that, up into and including Avengers, did much better than anybody thought that those movies would do at that time. I don't remember Scarlett Johansson going back to Marvel and saying, "Hey, you know what? That movie did better than it would than than it, you know than we thought it would. I need an extra ten million. I need an extra twenty million." She's not going back after the fact and suing them, saying, "You know, my contract was based upon the fact that this movie might make X numbers, but it made more money, so I think I'm entitled to a bigger slice of the pie." Which is essentially what Marvel's doing here. They're saying, "No, Scarlet, you you know you got this amount of money, and that should just be enough for you. You shouldn't want any more." Well, she didn't want any more when you were taking the bigger cut back then. Now she just wants her cut that she's you know in in a sense they're paying her for past work too. This is not. It's like, uh, uh, sorry, it's uh, uh, I'm, I'm having a hard time uh, making a good analogy out of this, but it's like um it's like basketball players. And like everybody, I don't know, uh, people that are familiar with basketball, Kobe Bryant signed a massive deal for his contract. Like the last basketball players do this. They sign their last contracts that they sign with teams are like four or five years and they're for obscene amounts of money. And it pays them like, you know, 50 to $60 million in the final year of their contract when they will be 38, 39, 40, which is, in basketball terms is basically retirement age. And, mm-hmm. and they don't perform at that level. They don't perform at a $60 million level, no. but you're paying them that much for the work that they did when they were 28, 29, 30, and they were winning you championships. And, you know, it, it, it's a way of leveling the playing field over the course of the career, not necessarily that one particular instance. And Disney's basically pointing to this one instance and being like, oh, no, we're only doing it based on this one instance and this alone. And it's just... It's a silly way to handle it, I think. Well, it's like getting a, a raise for like a promotion. You know what I mean? It's like if you go from like if you go if it's not a lateral move and you go up in the ladder, you get a pay bump because you're taking on more responsibility, doing X, Y, and Z. But it's also you're getting that promotion because of what you've shown you could do. Your capability in your last, mm-hmm. you know, your last five, ten years of the company or whatever. And so it's not like you go in and you want like retroactive pay for those ten years. Like, no, that got you to where you are now making that money. Right. So it's yes. like, that's the same concept. It's like, she got to a point in her career where she was worth being paid a flat rate of $20 million to do the movie, but she also was at a point where she was able to negotiate back-end points onto the movie. And it's like, yeah. now they're just like, well, we already paid you $20 million, though. Like, what more do you want? And COVID's happening, because yeah, that somehow COVID. relates to it. Come on. Like, it's bad times. Like, what more do we need to do? We don't need to honor our contract. Like, you already have money. Like, it's like so do you guys. <laughs> it's yeah. like, like, Jesus. But yeah, I mean, and then the last kind of thing that kind of ties into this because of the Bob Chapek comments. Because, uh, like, during that, uh, the shareholders meeting, it was some one of the, uh, Bob, did I say Bobby Kodak? 
or Bob Chapek. No, you said it right. You said okay. Bob Chapek. Bobby Kotick, you know, Blizzard, they're going through their whole thing. So had Bobby Kotick on the brain, Bob Chapek, all bad situations everywhere. But nevertheless, it, Chapek makes a comment during the thing that got the star of Chang Chi, Chang, or Shang Chi, as we now know it is pronounced in the film. Shang Chi. Shang Chi. Shang Chi. But he made a comment uh, that kind of got him kind of riled up because he says something along the lines of, "This is." Oh, here, here's the exact quote from Chapek. Oh, wait, no, this is not the JPEG quote. Damn it, where's the JPEG quote? Either way, they were discussing the the release of the Marvel... Like, Shang-Chi is not going on Premiere Access. It was just announced, we talked about before, that it's getting an exclusive 45-day window, and that comes off the heels of Warner Brothers and AMC doing their exclusive 45-day window for all the movies in 2022. So not the movies for the rest of this year, but all the movies next year. So they're doing the same thing for Shang-Chi, and he referred to that during the shareholder meeting as an interesting experiment. And uh, what's his name again? Simu, Simu Lee? Simu Lee? Simu Lee? Yeah. He comes out and says, we are not an interesting experiment. We are the underdog, the underestimated. We are the ceiling breakers. We are the celebration of culture and joy that will preserve after an embattled year. We are the surprise, Lou wrote on Instagram. I'm fired the fuck up to make history on September 3rd. Join us. But his inter- his his main thing is is we're we're not an experiment, dude. Like this is a a celebration of our our culture who never gets this opportunity to have an entire you know Asian led movie and a big movie at that. And it's like, and just in general with the film, it's like it's not an exp- it's fucking work, dude. Like it's it's an, like. I know it's just kind of like offhand verbiage. Like, I'm sure, I'm honestly sure that Chapek didn't really mean anything bad by this, but like, it is like the because of the current climate, I could see why someone would be kind of offended. It's like, yeah. it's like we spent years making this movie. And Only to have somebody say it's like, oh, yeah, it's an interesting experiment. Like, <laughs> you know Ooh. what I mean? So, it's like, I totally get where he's coming from. And it's like, in the end, like, I just think they need to keep Chapek. And the other representative who ousted Scarlet Salary, keep them off the mics. Right. Like, this will all blow over a lot smoother if we just keep them off the mics. Because they just, they're just holding sho- shovels like nearby. I thought a spider was on me, so I freaked the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> so they're just holding shovels like nearby just to dig themselves a little deeper every time they get on the mic at this point. Is that they just need to go back to the days of being much more amicable and just saying like, no comments, <laughs> right? Or, Talk to my agents or you know whatever, <laughs> like quit coming out and saying stuff. <laughs> like, but nevertheless, we got some more stuff to cover, so let's move on here. But guys, what do you think about this? Do you, I know it's a lot to unpack. So, do you think you know Simu Lu is like you totally in the right with these comments? Do you think Chapex and do you think they should stay off the mic? I kind of think they do because I really, I really in the end hope that uh, I'm hope I'm wrong about the Scarlett Johansson thing, but I just can't find any other justifiable reason that the company would kind of be doing the actions that they're doing. But if you guys have any other ideas, let us know down in the comment section below. (laughs) 